How's it going, everybody? This is the Nitty Gritty. My name is Chad. With me, as usual, is Leonard, and this is a show about wrestling. And this week, we are going to be bringing you something we haven't done in a little while, which is segment surgery. And this is where one of us sends the other person a segment of a wrestling show. Not necessarily a match, but either a promo or a maybe a special of some kind or something where people are talking, a marriage. We did a wedding once. Um, it could be anything, um, basically a segment of something involving wrestling that is not necessarily a match. And this time, Leonard sent me the segment. And Leonard, I'm going to throw it to you to introduce it. Yes, and this actually isn't even from a wrestling program. It's from something entirely different. And um, recently, at the time of this recording, we're not too far past the death of Paul Rubens, who played Pee Wee Herman. And this is a segment of Roddy Piper and Pee Wee Herman meeting. And it's uh, about the video that I sent Chad is about three minutes and 20 seconds. And the whole special can be found on YouTube and watched. Uh, the quality is not great. Uh, but this is from All-Star Rock and Wrestling Spectacular that aired on September 13th, 1985 on CBS. And it served as the preview to the new Saturday morning cartoon uh, season of the channel that was debu debuting, I believe, the, the next day. Uh, the storyline on the show is that Roddy Piper and others were supposed to be a guest on this talk show-like program uh, that was going to be hosted by Hervé Velichez who's best known as Tattoo from Fantasy Island. But Piper takes over the program and becomes the host of the program. Uh, and and uh, he's there, and Hogan would be on later, and Captain Lou Albano is on it as well, because Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling was debuting as part of, of that season lineup. Now, this was the year before Pee-wee's Playhouse. It would be on next season, but Pee-wee's Big Adventure – was a big surprise at the box office that summer. So that's why he's there. And this might even be a test run for can we work with Paul Rubens and do something with the Pee Wee Herman character. So um, it's a Scottish castle set with Piper on the throne. Uh, his sidekick is Gary Owens, who is the announcer from Lafton and the original voice of Space Ghost. And they bring out uh, Pee Wee Herman, who calls Piper Velichez, because he's expecting Hervé Velichez. <laughs> and the interesting thing here for for me is that this is about the only time I can remember somebody out talking and out dissing Piper, and he seems really flummoxed by it. You know, Herman works in all his standard stuff, like I know you are, but what am I? And I rubber in your glue, where you say bounces off me and sticks to you. And Piper just doesn't have any good comebacks for it. And I know this is probably taped and written and all that, but still, it feels like Herman gets the best of Piper in all their exchanges. Um, it leads to uh, Piper getting on Pee Wee about, oh, what do you do if it's a raining day and you're stuck outside, you can't do anything, uh, or stuck inside. And he says, oh, I can make something out of nothing. And he makes a sock puppet. And Piper gets a sock puppet. So Roddy Piper invented Mr. Socko is what we can learn from this. And then they do um, some bits with the sock puppet. And and, and, and Roddy is, is like playing along with the sock puppet stuff. And that's where, where the, the clip ends with them kind of having a stare down with each other. If you watch the entire show... It continues a little bit to Pee Wee uh, uh, introducing a preview of Muppet Babies. And then it comes back and they do some more stuff with the socks. And then Captain Lou Albano comes out. So so Pee Wee Herman is there for the rest of the program. But that's the main shtick him and Piper do um, is that basic three minutes and 20 seconds of the clip I sent Chad. So, you know, your, your, your thoughts on this. What did you think of this? Did you know this existed the Herman Piper meeting. So, you know, obviously I knew that Pee Wee Herman did stuff with the World Wrestling Federation, uh, WWE, but I did not know that this existed. No. Um, and, you know, you mentioned Pee Wee's Big Adventure, which is like about a month before this, August 9th, you know, this was released and this was, you know, uh, middle of September. So, you know, yeah, it was a big hit and he was really popular. Um, and, uh, you know, I grew up with Pee Wee Herman, 
And uh, as a lot of people my age did, uh, I just showed an episode of Pee Wee's Playhouse to my kids for the first time, and they thought it was very weird, um, which it is. But, yeah. uh, you know, he, he was kind of, uh, you know, a, a, a treasure of, uh, of a lot of our kids growing up um, because he was a genuine original. And uh, so this was a great clip to watch. And, you know, you kind of took the words out of my mouth in that, you know, you look at this and these are two great talkers and Piper is matched, you know, word for word with, uh, by Paul Rubens here. And it is very interesting to watch because you've seen Piper in, you know, any Piper's pit segment or, you know, a famous one from WrestleMania five when Morton Downey Jr. was in there with him. Um, but this was certainly an occasion where, you know, he was, you know, really being tested verbally anyway uh, by somebody who was very quick witted and really was able to kind of think right away doing improv because that's what Paul Rubens did. You know, I mean, like, yeah. he auditioned for SNL with Gilbert Gottfried and Gottfried got that. But he then mm -hmm. went on the road as a result and created the Pee Wee Herman show for people. And that's how the character kind of grew. Um, yeah, he was part of the Groundlings out in California and, and created the show with, um, his name escapes me now, but the actor who played Jombie was also part of the Groundlings at that time. And Phil right. Hartman, who yep. got on SNL, and he played Captain Carl in the early uh, Pee Wee Herman show theater segments. And uh, Cassandra Peterson, who became Elvira, was part of that uh, grouping with the Groundlings as, as well. So, right. um, yes, he had a very deep improv background. So, yeah, so this was uh, this was fun to watch. And, you know, Pee Wee literally takes the socks off of his own feet, <laughs> and, like creates this sock puppet, which, you know, if we're really being technical, I guess it would be Paul Rubens that gets created, you know, the uh, creation of Mr. Socko. Yes, but, uh, I, I, yes, yes. But since Piper was the wrestler, I gave it gave it to him. But, but, you know, Piper accidentally then puts it to his face and realizes that it was it was on it was on yeah, Pee Wee Pee Wee's foot. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is a short segment, but it's a short segment with like two very good talkers and two very big 80s personalities that you see kind of, you know, having a little exchange. And it, it's a fun thing to see. Um, I mean, this was Piper in his prime. This was Paul Rubens in his prime. So uh, mm -hmm. this was this was a lot of fun. And I, I did not watch the whole special. I'll confess to that. But uh I did see that they exist and, you know, there are several articles written about this one in particular and how, um, you know, Hogan's rock and wrestling uh, was, you know, just coming out and was something that both WWE and CBS wanted to kind of take advantage of uh, from a financial standpoint. So, you know, these types of specials were more commonplace back in the seventies and the eighties. Mm -hmm. um, you won't see stuff like this too much now, obviously, but uh, it's just kind of these are like really weird oddities that exists that exist only on YouTube, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, yeah. They, they would do fall season previews and they would do the cartoon previews. And there's a lot of these on YouTube that I have found and watched. There is one that I remember from a, a kid that I eventually found that didn't seem to be up for a long time. It was Tony Danza in a gym with uh scooby-doo and scrappy-doo like people in costume and it was for the 13 ghosts of scooby-doo the season that that came out uh scrappy and, and, so somebody was dressed up as scrappy-doo in a costume i if i remember correctly i believe it was scooby and scrappy wow it might have been scooby and somebody in a shaggy costume not necessarily dressed as shaggy but i want to say it was scrappy and scooby I was going to say, uh, playing a scrappy do costume has to be pretty difficult. Yeah. Well, I assume it would, it would, it would be a little person actor. Yeah. Um, that, that was in there. I, I had to find out. I, I could be talking out of my butt. I, but I believe it was. And then I remember watching another one that was, I think it was for, for ABC. It might have been for CBS. It probably was for CBS. It was, if I remember right, it was um, like Scott Bayo had a discotheque. And Boss Hogg and Roscoe P. Coltrane were trying to shut it down. <laughs> so that's the kind of lunacy yeah. 
that the that these types of specials would have, and they would be interspersed with like clips from the new the new shows debuting uh, right. the next the, the the next day. Um, another one I remember because a friend of mine actually had it on beta tape of all things because we found her old beta player once. Wow! And she had some tapes, and it was it was um, like an award show, and this was for NBC, and it was hosted by uh, Murdoch from the A Team. Okay. As Murdoch, they, they, a lot of times the, it was, the actors would be playing, you know, the characters from their TV shows. So you would have the synergy of them, uh, you know, hyping their own show while doing the cartoon thing. So we've gone off on a complete tangent. But, yes, a lot of these are found on YouTube and it totally of our generation. Anyone from their, yeah. you know, mid-30s to mid-40s probably remembers these. But yeah, I don't think, well, one, they don't do it today because there's no Saturday morning cartoons, but right. they don't do previews for the fall seasons anymore. And that's going right. away just as we, uh, I was just killing some time before we came on and I was reading some news headlines. Um, cable and network viewership has dropped under 50% for the first time ever, right. uh, meaning that more people are either not watching television at all or watching streaming services, right? Um, other than what is is quote unquote traditional uh, television. So the these types of of specials and the types of another thing that you can find on YouTube that I love to watch is like the commercials. They're kind of the the network commercial, like watch us, watch NBC, watch ABC. Look at all our great stars. Look at all our great shows. Um, type of thing. And uh, yeah, it was purely, uh, it's a nostalgia thing, uh, definitely of, of its time. You're not going to see that again because th like Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus don't have those types of brand identities right. or the idea of we have our star shows and our star actors. They have those, but I think the mentality more now is no one program is bigger than our service. Where right. back in the day, you would have shows that were not necessarily bigger than the network, but you had your three or four flagship shows that carried you from season to season. Yeah, and I mean, you know, gosh, I mean, you know, we could have a whole nother, uh, you know, episode of a show about this topic. And, you know, my previous um, show, Daily to Downloads, we, we talked at great length about, you know, the changing uh, ways we watch things. And it's been very much, you know, what we talked about on that show was the fact that, you know, nowadays on streaming services, no matter if it's Netflix or whatever it is, it's very much, uh, okay, this is our new release today. And now a week from now, good luck finding whatever that was. Because yes. it will not be as easy to find. And that was just not the case in the 70s and the 80s. You know, they were, I don't want to say proud, maybe is the right word, but they were very much more, you know, we want you to see everything that we have to offer right now. And we want to remind you about that until you decide to watch it. <laughs> like, yes. Or, like, or we decide to yank it because nobody's watching it. Right. And, you know, now it's just funny. All these streaming services are jacking up their prices and it's basically like we're, you know, they're merging here and there and we're basically going to rediscover cable again. Is where yeah. We're because I, I mean, I've seen this, that, that, if you have the top 10 streaming services, you would pay about as much as you would for a standard cable package. Right. Yeah. Which is, yeah. <laughs> don't tell my wife that. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, yeah. oddly enough, you know, my, my, my mom recently, the week of us doing this episode got rid of, 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 of direct TV because my sister got her a smart TV. Okay. And so she's asking me about all the free, you know, services and stuff. And the funny thing is, is she said to me was, well, you know, I, I, you know, I like the direct TV, but it got to the point that there was nothing on, you know, I'd watched all the shows I watched and there was nothing on. So, you know what she's watching? Like right now, her number one thing is old episodes of the price is right with Bob Barker. And I'll bet you that's like 80s. on a free service, like Tubi or something, right? It is. It's on. She. she it's on uh, Pluto and the Roku channel. Both. Pluto. She's watching it on Roku. Right. Yeah. That's the and other one. 
And two, she asked me, oh, you know, I, you know, I used to like all those old detective shows like Columbo and Banachek and all these 70s detective shows. I went on and I found her like a dozen of those programs that she can watch on free services like Tubi and Roku and Pluto TV. Right. And, 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 and kind of what you're, you know, what you were saying, like you have to find it. Like right. back when, when, when we were kids with cable, you would just flip through and find something and start watching it. She can't flip through. I have to help her find these shows. So I say, hey, if you think of something that you want to watch, let me know and I'll see if I can't find it on something right. for you to watch it on. But 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 she she is basically just watching these old shows on all these uh, free streaming platforms and is perfectly fine with it, not paying a dime outside of internet, you know, uh, having internet service so she can you know, get, get, get the, get the streaming services, but that's primarily watch. I know my sister gave her, you know, some passwords, shared some passwords for a few things, but right. she's primarily watching all this stuff and will just text me about what she has found. That's it's like, funny. now I'm watching burn notice on the Roku channel. <laughs> yeah. Burn notices. <laughs> I was a big burn notice fan. Um, it's funny. She loved, she loved burn notice. She loved all those USA shows for, whatever reason like suits and burn notice she a monk she loved all those yeah suits was a big one yeah i've i've had many conversations about usa shows with people it's interesting how that works I, you know 10 year old me would have loved watching a marathon of bob barker prices right episodes <laughs> right see and that's another thing she loves too like it's just i go to this channel and it's all this one show like i don't have to watch that show and then the next show comes on it's 24 hours a day of whatever or on demand of whatever she wants to watch. Again, we've gone off on a complete tangent. I will tell you this. So because she was talking to me about watching Roku, I was killing some time today because I got done early with work. And I got on the Roku channel, which I hadn't explored much. And I watched four episodes of Sequest. <laughs> That's funny. Well, which I completely forgot was a show. Until I saw it like in the in these you know the thumbnail in the sci-fi strip, and I go, oh, I remember Sequest, and I started watching it. That's funny, you know. To bring it back around to Pee Wee, I, yes. I before I had shown an episode of Pee Wee's Playhouse, the first one, which is ice, called Ice Cream Soup. Um, I showed that to my kids because you know my girls, you know, showing them anything PG thirteen or above, like they tend to get scared by some of the stuff you see in it. So like mm -hmm. how old are they? What's that? How old are they? They are nine. So nine, okay. I tried to show them kindergarten cop and it did not go well. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of death in that movie that I had forgotten about. There's shooting. There's people getting shot to death in that there's an OD. Yeah. There yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I forgot about the two different dose. So, you know, I'm trying to find PG movies, you know, live action movies, I should say. They've seen a lot of the cartoons and CGI. Yeah. But like, you know, I realized Pee-wee's Big Adventure is rated PG. Um, and I was like, well, you know, if I'm showing them Pee-wee's Big Adventure, I should introduce them to the character somehow, right? By showing them an episode of Pee-wee's yeah. Playhouse. Little did I know at the time that Pee-wee's Big Adventure came out before Pee-wee's Playhouse. Either way, yes. they watched it and found it somewhat odd. But uh, I will show them Pee-wee's Big Adventure at some point. But uh, uh, be careful of Large Marge. I, oh yeah, they'll they'll get creeped out by Large Marge for sure. That will that will scare the crap out of them. One hundred percent. And by the way, P, the reason I bring it up is because I was looking for episodes of Pee-wee's Playhouse on a service, and I had to go on YouTube. So YouTube had yeah yeah. There's it's weird what you can't find. Like one show my mom wanted was Beretta, which starred Robert Blake. <laughs> he was a cop and he had a bird. <laughs> As you were. And and I couldn't find that on anything. Not even a pay, not even like Amazon Prime or nothing. It just did not exist. Right. And this was like a popular show that was on for several seasons. It was a top rated show. So whoever has the rights hasn't done anything with with it. <laughs> At least, I, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember what, seeing it on TV Land at one point. That's how I ever watched any episodes of it. So I don't know, but it was just strange that it's on zero. I did a search, you know, and it was like 
well, here's other shows like it. Right. But could not find it. So it's always kind of strange what you can and can't find sometimes. Um, like another thing I've, I've looked for that I would love to watch is the old Friday the 13th, the series and the that Nightmare on Elm Street DVD. series. Yeah, but I, I I think I could find uh, Freddy's Nightmares on something because I think I remember watching the pilot. Uh, yeah. But I haven't been able to find uh, Friday the 13th on anything. Yeah, I remember uh, a local library at one of our previous apartments had um, one of the seasons of Friday the 13th series. And I and I checked it out. And I checked out like that season and I kind of got the gist of what that show was like after that. And it was. Yeah, every episode was the same. Yeah. Every episode was the same episode. Yeah, but yeah. There's those... a cursed item. We have to get the cursed item back. Yeah. The person using the cursed item meets a tragic end. Right. Pretty Every much. single episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's funny. I kind of have to, you know, really be uh, adept at navigating today's streaming services to find what you want uh you know a lot of days out of the week i'll have to think about a movie that you know if i don't own it um like pb's big adventure i did not own um so i had to google if it was on a streaming service which it wasn't so you know voodoo um has a thing called dista digital so i was able to get it that way but uh but yeah you kind of have to work on some of these things that if you want to find them you have to really do your research but yeah check this out uh, I'll post the link in our uh, description, so it's a little bit easier if you want to see this particular clip. Uh, let us know if you remember this, uh, or if you're watching it uh, after you listen to us. Let us know what you thought, and uh, check out our other shows, such as uh, Random Match Reviews and uh, Stupid Questions and What's That Card and our full-length episodes. We're also available if you listen to podcasts. Uh, Stitcher's going away soon, but we're available everywhere else. And uh, please feel free to leave us comments, five-star reviews, and hit the like button on our YouTube videos. So thank you very much for checking us out. And for Leonard, my name is Chad, and we will see you next time.